7,000 years ago, the first really oceanic people came out of China and it came out of Taiwan. Then you get to Polynesia, this oceanic country bounded by Hawaii in the north and New Zealand in the southwest and Rapa Nui in the east. 10 million square miles, bigger than Russia. And it was discovered by these extraordinary people. They were really the astronauts of our ancestors. They were the greatest explorers on the face of the Earth. Unaided by modern instruments, these extraordinary explorers discovered and settled every livable landmass in the Pacific, relying solely on a complex understanding of the stars, the winds, the waves, and other cues from nature. Guided by this traditional wisdom and perspective, Hawaiians mastered the science of living sustainably on islands. Western expansion, however, brought not only new ways of seafaring, but a shift in perspective on how to interact with the natural environment. Eventually, traditional practices and worldviews were nearly forgotten. But a group of determined individuals got together in the 1970s to resurrect indigenous wisdom by building a traditional canoe and sailing it in the way of the ancestors. Hokula's first voyage to Tahiti reawakened a cultural pride, identity, and an intimate connection to place. In a generation, Hokulea has sailed over 140,000 nautical miles to reunite the world's largest oceanic nation. Today, Hokulea voyages around the planet with the message of Malama Honua, or caring for island earth, with a firm belief that blending traditional and modern technologies will help us find our way to a healthier future. Hokulea, to us, to go around the world, has this enormous potential to go to 40, 50 countries on the planet, to be with the great navigators on Earth. And I'm not talking about those in canoes. I'm talking about those who are doing things to give kindness and compassion to the Earth and those who live on it, those navigators. We're not gonna change the world, but we're gonna go and build a network of people around the Earth who are gonna change it and our job is to help them be successful. Having sailed more than 7,000 miles throughout Polynesia on the initial legs of the worldwide voyage, Hokulea and Hikianalia arrived in Aotearoa, known to many as New Zealand. It was a landing that hadn't been made in over 30 years, and during those decades, similar to the revival experienced in Hawaii, traditional Polynesian voyaging had made a comeback in Aotearoa under the guidance of renowned canoe builder and pole navigator Hector Busby. And while sailing around the North Island of Aotearoa, crew members visited Hector's homeland of Aurere and witnessed his massive rendition of the Star Compass. Foundational to navigation is a star compass. So there's all different kinds of configuration, but it all comes down to a, a circle divided up into 32 equal parts. An ingenious device passed down to his students by pole navigator Mao Piailug, the star compass is an indigenous framework that maps the heavens into quadrants, allowing navigators to track wind, wave, and celestial movement. Every community uh, brings its own kind of creativity to the, uh, to the circle. So I'm seeing how we can employ uh, what Hector has done here. You'd be surprised how many young people are interested in navigation and sailing. This star compass is pretty awesome. Um, i never seen this kind of star compass before. You know, usually we study on a paper or on the canoe, but here you can really measure your hands and then you can really use the horizon around you to see the stars on the land. 
I mean, the way the compass is laid out is very, very large. You stand in the middle on this uh, rotating chair and you're able to look in all directions on the horizon. It's, it's real great for orientating yourself to the Southern Hemisphere stars. So I'm hoping in the future that some of uh, the navigators that uh, would, from Hawaii would uh, come and help out with some of the teaching. Busby created this physical space in Aurere as a gift to future navigators and sailors throughout the Pacific. And as crew traveled south throughout Aotearoa, they shared the Hawaiian star compass and exchanged stories of voyaging with communities, encouraging learners of all ages to navigate their own paths to Malama Honua. Awesome! Malama Honua in Hawaiian means to care for island earth. What's something we can do today, right now, in our communities to take care of our earth, our, our homes? Yes. Pick up rubbish. Pick up rubbish. Perfect. Good. Recycle. Recycle. Great. Plant trees. Plant trees. We want to hear about their stories of what they're doing uh, in terms of sustainability of the environment, of the ocean resources. And we just want to host this conversation and record it and collect it so we can share it with the world. Kia ora. Good morning. Kia ora. Kia ora. Aloha. Kia ora whanau. Hello. It's indeed a pleasure to have the pukulea here. Thank you for sending your awesome, beautiful crew over here to visit us and educate us about your waka. What I've learned from you guys is how to navigate from the stars and it's really interesting how you guys live and it's, I wouldn't mind living that way, it's pretty cool. We came down here just to share a bit of our culture a um, bit of our koha of waiata song, um, just in celebration of having the hukulea here. I'm here in Whangare, Te Te Rangaparaua, on our river of Hatea. So, no mai haere mai, uh, e te iwi nui tonu, e mihi ana ane te aroha uh, Ngāti Hau, o te rā pehi awi ni marae, a Hatea ka pākea ki te iwi nui tonu, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, and join the voyage, hukulea.com. In the following months, Hokulea sailed to communities throughout Aotearoa to spread the message of Malama Honua. Hokulea also journeyed to the South Island for the first time in her 40 years of voyaging. By the end of March 2015, the Worldwide Voyage crew members had met with nearly 8,500 people throughout Aotearoa. One of these unforgettable encounters being the 2,500 students of the Manaya Kalani School Cluster who welcomed Hokulea and Hikianalia to their community at Point England Beach near Auckland, New Zealand. When we came onto shore and we heard the children, I was inspired, I was in awe. I felt so deeply how strong they are, how smart they are, how beautiful they are how much pride they have in their country and their culture. Because today is a day that we learn from you. Today is a day that we learn the possibilities and the opportunities and the creativity and the innovation when you link tradition to technology and science. I know all of us will go home with the gift of you. Just as Hokulea is guided by the stars, the Manaya Kalani schools draw inspiration from the legend of Maui Tikitiki Ataranga and his journey to Aotearoa, where he used the Manaya Kalani constellation to navigate. The schools have adopted Maui's sense of innovation in their teaching and learning practices. Maui combined ancient wisdom with um, high end Polynesian tech, the Waka Haurua and the navigational technology, because that's technological understanding, if you like. Ancient wisdom applied to new technology equals fantastic opportunity in future and, and a happy outcome, an outcome of enormous endurance, of incredible um, epic proportions. If you walk around the school, it's, it's infused everywhere. Um, there's nothing that they're doing that isn't touched by technology, so it's not 
traditional versus modern. It's using modern and traditional together to prepare these kids for the future. Inspired by the collective spirit of these children and the thousands who connected with the canoes over the first year of this worldwide voyage, Hokulea sailed to Manganui, its final port in Polynesia, to prepare for the next leg of the worldwide voyage that would take her beyond the Polynesian Triangle and on towards the shores of Australia. <laughs> Today was a day that we chose departure. For us, departure is a complicated thing. Because when Captain Bruce takes a canoe, when the weather is right, he is correct. We will leave the triangle. We'll head west to lands we don't know, islands we've never seen, people we've never met. That's why we go. He's correct that we have not, we've sailed 9,000 miles to get here, but we haven't left home. Because this, even though this room is separated in protocol, this is one family. It's one people. It's one ocean. It's one voyage. When all was said and done, Hokula and her Holokai left the shores of Aotearoa and took with them the blessings, teachings, and values of their combined Ohana Va'a. Guiding Hokula on this historic journey was Kaleo Manuiva Wong, part of a new generation of navigators and voyagers being mentored by master navigators like Bruce Blankenfeld. This morning we're looking at the sun, it's rising in Aina, and uh, based off of the sun we're positioning where we see the, these swells, these big swells coming towards Ava'a. We're kind of at the border of the Tasman and the Pacific, so we expect that we see these big swells. You can see today, pretty rainy. Uh, we had some winds that are a little swirly, uh, but all coming out of the east and using the wind and the swells to guide us to we arrive safely at our destination in Australia. You can see how warm it is. This guy, not even need fall weather gear. As I was mentioning earlier, we had big, big seas, strong winds, uh, heavy rain at times. But as you can see today, a little different story. Now we're kind of stuck in variable winds where we're kind of just drifting around in circles with all of our sails luffing. Uh, we estimate our time uh, be about another three or four days before we get to Australia. However, if we get stuck in weather like this, it may delay our arrival into Australia. You know, Khalil Wong, he understands the navigational concepts really well. It was like a the perfect voyage for him. He just sharpened his skills. You know, the next few voyages that he does, it's only going to get better. Harbor, uh, Australia, after 12 days of going across the Tasman Sea from Aotearoa to here. Planning on spending a few extra days here to wait uh, this big approaching weather coming our way. Safety is our number one priority and going out into Sydney at this time would, would be a, a foolish mistake. Uh, being here in Coffs allows us time to 
clean our canoe uh, and allows us time to make sure everything is good on our va'a, clean everything up and uh, allow us to arrive into Sydney with our canoe looking all brand new, fixed, uh, shiny. After a few short days, the crew left for the 250 mile journey down to Sydney. Uh, swell subsided and the wind subsided, so they gave us a good window, so now we're heading off to Sydney. Hokula and her crew were greeted by hundreds of people, some familiar faces and some new. To come here to Sydney, it, it is definitely a, a new place, but the beauty of it is um, what seems old is the connection with the, um, the native peoples of this land. So we had the arrival ceremonies, the very first part of the arrival ceremony was engaging with the uh, Ganigal people and being um, greeted in their native tongue, you know, and uh, accepted and welcomed onto the land in their way, uh, with their uh, smoke ceremony and the cleansing and all of that. And it kind of brought me back to that, you know, native to a native perspective. This canoe helped the revival of our, of our people, the revival of our culture, the revival, revival of our language. I stand here in front of you guys because of the power of Hokula and what it was able to do for our people. And as we travel along to the rest of the communities, we hope we have the same impact on indigenous communities around the world. Coming across to Australia, to a place where Hokulea has never been, is, is different for us. It's, di it's different for the canoe. But as we're talking about Malama Honua, we have to talk about us as connected to indigenous peoples around the world. That we, even though we focus on protecting our places as individual people in our individual communities, that our communities go from Hawaii to the rest of Polynesia. And now we're going out across the world. We're going to continue this, this great exploration, education, and commitment to care for our communities and care for our land and care for our earth, and that we'll be able to leave a better earth for our children and our grandchildren. <laughs>